Good morning, gardening friends. This is Anna in the Unity Church Garden, Children's Garden. And as a gardener, I spend a lot of time growing things, and it gives me great joy watching plants sprout and grow and develop flowers and do all the things they do. I get to watch these plants go through their life cycle, and um, it's it's something I think about a lot. It's not something I take for granted because sometimes my seeds don't sprout at all and sometimes my plants die. And that's part of the life cycle too. So as we light our chalice today, I would like for you to think about how wonderful it is to be alive and um, things that we do in our lives that, that give us peace and joy. We light the chalice as a symbol of our faith, the light of truth, and the warmth of love. And join with me now in the song. Rise up, O flame, by thy light glowing, show to us beauty, vision, and joy. Rise up, O flame, by thy light glowing, show to us beauty, vision, and joy. And it's time to do joys and sorrows. We have our blue stones and our yellow stones. And as we get to the middle of July, I always think about her, my mother. Um, she was my first garden teacher and her birthday would have been this week and she would have been 91. And although I miss her, which is the blue stone, I also am thankful for all the lessons that she taught me and that still stay with me and the memories that I have. So, we're thinking today about being alive. Um, and the question is, how do we know something's alive? This tree over my head, is it alive? Are we alive? How do we know? Well, take a deep breath. When we breathe, that's a sign that we're alive. If we move our arms, our hands, our heads, and when we walk, those are signs that we're alive. The tree breathes, too, through its leaves. When it moves, it's more unless it's the wind, which isn't its own movement, it, it's much slower because it grows so slowly, but sometimes that's a sign that something is alive. Um, what about something like dinosaurs? They were alive once, but we know they're not alive anymore, that they're now extinct. So I want us to think, how do we know whether something's alive and what happens to it when it dies? And I'm going to go over to the table. So I'm going to put on a pair of garden gloves so I look like a real gardener. And I have here a whole bunch of garbage, stuff that came from my house. And we're going to play a game to understand what it means to be alive um, and what happens to things when they die. I want, I'm going to start sorting things into two piles. And I want you to be thinking as you watch me do this, why am I putting things in one pile or the other pile. There's a pattern and it's up to you to figure out what it is. So I'm going to start, I'll put this all kind of in the middle. I have something here that I will put on this side. Old spaghetti sauce will go there. Oh, this was a really good orange. That goes there. Aluminum foil. <gasps> Ooh, I do like chocolate. Onions. Onion skins. They... Ah! I'll pick that up in a second. Um, onion skins go over here. Orange peel goes over there. Pot bottle goes over here. And the wind is not going to make this too easy. We're going to add some leaves to this pile. I have a plant that doesn't look so nice anymore. It goes on that pile. Bubble wrap. Yogurt container. 
Ooh, now this one's gross. This one's slimy. Ew. But there is something on here I have to separate. I'm gonna put this here. I'm gonna put this over here. I'm gonna take, oh, I've got some tea. I've got an apple core, a piece of a cabbage, a piece of lettuce, and this was lettuce from the garden that started flowering, so pull that out. Bottom of a rhubarb, the lid to the jar, <sighs> strawberry, it's not very good to eat anymore, paper towel, yeah, I'll put this over here too and this over here. So now, were you thinking as I did that, what's the difference between this pile and this pile? If you were thinking that we used to be able to eat some of this and you can't eat plastic, you're right. If you were thinking this was alive and this isn't, you were right. Um, if you were thinking that these things will rot and these don't, I think you're on to something. We have an experiment and I'm going to invite you to do some of this at home too. If you have a big bowl that you don't need for a while or a large jar or anything like that, you can put a little bit of dirt in that bowl or in that tray and put it in this one too. And if you break these things up and put them in here, this can sort of represent the earth. So what I have here are two mini earths. One of them has all this stuff in it, including my chocolate wrapper. And the other one has this kind of stuff in it. And even this cardboard I can put in here. And let's see what happens. If we were to let the rain land on that or take a hose and make it wet and put all of this stuff in here, all of this stuff, what do you think would eventually happen to the cardboard, the leaves, the cabbage, the eggshells, all those sorts of things that came out of my kitchen. And what do you think would happen to this? Oh, I forgot the strawberry. So I'm going to let Michelle take a close-up of that strawberry because that one has got some real special stuff growing on it. It's all gray and um, kind of goofy looking. Not one you'd want to eat, but that's what our story is about today. We're going to let Dan, I'm going to join Dan for the story today. It's called Rotten Pumpkin. Today, the story is Rotten Pumpkin. A rotten tale in 15 voices by David M. Schwartz and photos by Dwight Kuhn. Here I stand, bright with light, proud and round. Tonight is my glory night. Call me Jack. Oh, my flame is spent. No more do I glow. Back to the garden I go. Some think that mice like me are cute nibbling on a pumpkin, but it's not cute being everybody's lunch. Weasels, gophers, owls, snakes, they all want mouse pie. I'm always on the lookout because danger's on the lookout for me. Mmm, my keen nose smells what I am looking for. Dead fish. Rotten meat, dog do, the stinkier, the better. Oh, a rotten pumpkin is perfect. I taste it with my feet. Oh, you're going to love hearing how I eat. 
I vomit on the pumpkin flesh. My vomit dissolves pumpkin nutrients so I can lap them up. A delicious, nutritious morning smoothie. My big night is just a memory. My smile has faded. My crown is down. Where I once smiled and winked, now fungi ring my mouth and eyes. A cheerful Jack, I am no more. I'm a mold with a nasty name. People call me black rot. I'm black and I rot. Someone cut holes into this pumpkin and that really helped me out. Now I've got soft, fresh pumpkin flesh for lunch. Rotten fellow that I am, I'll turn Jack to mush. Oh, black rot, I appreciate you. I'm Fusarium rot. And you prepared the pumpkin skin for me like a gardener's hoe prepares the earth. I landed as a spore, and from tiny gray spores, great reddish fungi can grow. Now you're gone, but I'm living off the land. You ready for me, pumpkin land. Hear this, all you molds and rots, I, the sow bug, owe you. Without you, I'd be under a log, chewing rotten wood. My mouth parts can't break through the pumpkin skin, but you, the mold, you softened it up now, so I can munch its deliciously rotten flesh. I'll repay you by getting you to your next pumpkin. I'm sure to swallow bits of mold, and when I poop, I'll leave it behind. In other words, I'll spread you around so I can thank you and you can thank me. We're even. Hmm. Am I a still a pumpkin? My top is collapsing and my skin is a mess of molds. They grow all over each other and right through me, eating my flesh from the outside in and from the inside out. Not even winter snows and low temperatures have slowed them down because most fungi that love pumpkins thrive in cold weather. No, oh, how did I get so unlucky? Don't call me a lowly earthworm. The only thing low about me is my place on the ground. The work I do is high and mighty. Dead leaves, flowers, fruit, and animal carcasses are all health food for me. When I eat a chunk of rotten pumpkin, its nutrients go into my mouth and many more go out my back end. Now they're part of the soil. They will nourish growing plants, including new pumpkins. See, I'm not lonely at all. I am everywhere. In the air, in the soil, in your body, and on this pumpkin. I am a single cell, which means I'm too small for you to see without a microscope. When millions like me cover a piece of fruit, you'll notice a whitish film. That's me, yeast. Some kinds of yeast help bread dough rise. Other kinds turn grape juice into wine and cocoa beans into chocolate. We all, all of us yeasts, we all digest sugar and release carbon dioxide along with alcohol. This is called fermentation. When you bake bread, the alcohol burns off, but the gas bubbles get trapped, and they expand from the heat, and that's what makes the final bread soft and puffy. Oh, my pumpkin days are done. My 
pumpkin pride is gone. My pumpkin future? None. I'm a smelly, rotten mess spilling my seeds on the garden soil. Am I good for anything now? Oh, I think of myself as a mother, the mother of all that grows on the land. I give seeds the molecules of nourishment they need. And what happens to these molecules when the plants die? They return to me. But I cannot pluck these molecules from dead plants as a hand picks fruit. They must be released by decomposers, the molds and rots, the earthworms and sow bugs, the many fungi, yeast, and bacteria. Even flies and mice and slugs do their part. With decomposers working, working, working nonstop, the earth is a fruitful place. There were hundreds of seeds like me, slippery and moist, connected by a stringy web. One day a hand reached inside and scooped most of us out. That hand missed me. Through bright sunny days and long stormy nights, I sat inside the pumpkin. The animals came and the molds grew. The pumpkin collapsed into a heap of goo. And I waited. The goo seeped into the soil, enriching it with nutrients. And I waited. I nestled in pumpkin soil, warming from the sun's energy, swelling with spring rains, pushing roots downward and stems upward. If all goes well, my flowers will form a fruit. My fruits will ripen. Maybe one of them will be your next jack-o'-lantern. Maybe it will have a glory day of its own. <laughs> and that is the end of the story of the rotten pumpkin. <laughs> so that was a pretty exciting story, wasn't it? <laughs> Um, that pumpkin, by the time the story was done, it went from a beautiful uh, jack-o'-lantern to really ugly, stinky, slimy, rotten, ugly pumpkin to finally, in the end, rotting away and becoming part of the earth. And one seed had been left inside that pumpkin and it was able to grow really well because that old pumpkin had been there. And here in the garden, we try really hard to observe nature and to follow her example. As I think about all these plants and I think about all my garbage over there <laughs> and what rots and what doesn't, um, in nature, when a plant grows, as it grows, it takes some elements from the air, some from the water, some from the soil, and it uses all of those things, the carbon, the nitrogen, the calcium, the oxygen, the hydrogen, the carbon, and it manufactures new chemicals for its body. As long as that plant is alive, those nutrients, those elements, are locked inside that plant's body. What happens when it dies is those elements are released and they go back into the soil and that allows new plants to grow and grow well. So we kind of follow that. We have our compost bins over there and when I set up my mini earth over there, the one that had the organic stuff in it, the things that had once been alive and that were able to rot, those are the things we put in our compost pile and they help make the compost rich and then that makes the soil rich. And I think back to my yan and yin comparison when we were talking about the wasps last, last week because we have life and we have death and they seem to be opposites and yet it's really a cycle. And if we think about decomposers like earthworms and millipedes and fungi and yeast and bacteria and all those things that we think of as so gross. If we think about what they're doing, we're taking that seed, growing the plant, and then the plant dies and the decomposer 
finishes out that circle. It completes it in a really beautiful, beautiful way. So, we have life, we have death, we have light, we have darkness, and we have each other. We will extinguish this and we'll be thinking about decomposers this week and how even though they're kind of yucky, um, they're really, really, really important. And if you stop to look at them, they're pretty cool. What they do is really pretty cool. We extinguish this flame, but we know that the light of truth and the warmth of love go with us in our hearts. Oops, wrong switch. <laughs> Have a great week.